Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of ABC Evolution Podcast. Today we have the, the pleasure, and that's it hits my heart really close. Uh, Patty Brossman. So a quick introduction hey. to Patty. Patty, thank you so much uh, for joining me and the ABC Evolution in our episode number two. <laughs> Uh, it's welcome. always good to give good news, and it was <laughs> the cherry on top of the 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 cake. Uh, you signed in your first um, professional contract, and I was like, "Oh, I need to bring it on the podcast." So, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank like you I said, for having me. Uh, you're welcome. And I'm going to start with a little introduction, uh, just giving a little bit of your background, uh, a USD alum starting practically now, uh, yeah. from Germany, Berlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, did great things with the national team in 2017. Uh, they won the European group B and end up going to the group A. If you're not European, you don't know what that means, but let me, <laughs> let me tell you, let me, let me fill you in on that. That is like mm -hmm. big accomplishment, especially yeah. for Germany. Uh, I know you had a blast with that team, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit also. Uh, leaving home, crossing the ocean, coming to USD, just one of the most beautiful campus in the country. Very smart move on that. Had a great yeah. career in the, at USD, being top 10 on the rebounding. Uh, category and last year you also at last year I mean this year you were one of the captains of the team so again welcome <laughs> and of course the first question we're gonna talk we're gonna ask you how was your path from the first time you touched the ball until you landed at USD um that's a great question well I started when I was six years old and my dad just um, drove me to like a basketball practice and I really liked it from the first day and I kept continue playing and practicing with like first with only guys because they didn't really had a girls team and then I was practicing with girls and it was just a great like I love to compete right in the beginning and then we um, after practice we like got to play a little bit and I just love to like play with others and like and I'll build build my um competitiveness and build my um what do you call it, confidence mm -hmm. and then throughout throughout my childhood I was just um playing at one club team and then and then I got recruited by the um, Berlin team where like the best players of Berlin played and then I um, played there and I developed, developed my basketball skills. And then 2011, 2010, I got invited to play for the national team. And that was like probably one of my biggest accomplishments at that point. Because it's hard to get in there. And then I got the letter and got recruited and I got super excited. And then 20, like 2011, I had my first um, game with the national team. Super exciting to play on the at, to like stand on the court and then sing the national anthem and like represent your country. It was a real, and like have your like last name on your back of Jersey. So that was really exciting. Um, yeah. And then I just, uh, I played second, second league in Germany with like older women. I was 14 at that time and the oldest was 32, 33. So that was a little change to adjust because before that I just played with my age group but it helped me a lot um, um, develop my playing style and being stronger on the court because I just had to compete against older um, older players stronger players yeah and, and, and that's then, what that here in US and I, I went through the same thing and when we say older players for for American players it's like okay you just go and play in varsity and 
and who understand that it's like you competing, like you said, you were so young and you're competing against professional women. Like, mm -hmm. it's so hard, but at the end of the day, it is a, a plus for your game. And uh, when you come to US, I definitely that's something that uh, help you facing adversity, right? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, it just helped me a lot. And then 2015, I got an email by, um, from Coach Fisher, USC coach, mm -hmm. and that they like, like my playing style, like me as a player. And a couple of weeks later, I came over to USC, um, visit the campus, talk to the coaches, and I really liked it. And right after, I kind of signed. And um, 2016, I came to college uh, for the first time. Like I came over or lived in the United States for the first time, and that was a big change. But yeah, and here I am now, four years later, graduating next weekend. So all grown. Look at you. Look at you. I know. So how did Coach Fisher uh, heard about you the first time? Um, so she had an alumni, Morgan Henderson, and she played in Germany back in the back in her like playing days. And she heard about me just, just because I played national team and um, we were like going around the country and uh, playing in the second league. And I guess she um, saw me, saw me playing and reached out to Coach Fisher and they watched some film about me um, playing the national t with the national team at the European Championship. Yeah, and then I got the email that they um, saw me playing. And I came over to LA to uh, Linda Fröhle. She's a um, ex-WNBA player, German WNBA player. Oh, I know, she, I know. I used yeah. to be there, man. Great player. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Back <laughs> in the days, they called her the female Dirk Nowitzki. So awesome, yeah. <laughs> no. Nice. So yeah, I came over to LA. She had a camp at that time, and I joined her camp. And Coach Fisher and Morgan Henderson came over, um, or came up to LA to watch me practicing with the team, and they really liked what they saw. Mm -hmm. Good. It, yeah. Well, since we're talking about the national team i'm gonna show you a picture and i want to thoughts on it all right yeah 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 uh, right mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so tell me tell me about uh the before the preparation for this moment the during and the after when you realize oh we won oh we're gonna be <laughs> Because I know how it feels, but I, I, I have to hear from you because whoever is listening have to feel that emotion, that mm -hmm. feeling of accomplish something so big. So tell me the before when you guys, you guys had a tremendous run, really good mm -hmm. basketball. You guys were playing great. You guys ended up um, playing in the same group that Portugal was. So I was, I was watching it and, uh, when you guys realize, okay, we're going to play, walk us through the semifinals on. Let's go. Okay, so um, first we have, we have to start in the group because this, not, this European Championship like, was insane for us. So we, we won our first three games. It was like amazing. We did not, we, we did not like, knew we were actually capable of like, winning so many games and playing that great. And then we faced, um, who's the, like we faced our fourth group game against Slovenia, I believe. Oh gosh, yeah, Slovenia, and um, or Slovakia, either one. I forgot. It's been a long time. But we played it. Um, yeah, we, we played against um, that team, and we lost in our group phase and we're like, okay, dang, because we were splitting one or two plays, and then the first place would go um go ahead to the um, quarterfinals semifinals and the other two team, team would be cut so, so that's pretty much the the winner's bracket and the loser's bracket exactly okay. so we lost that game and our faith was all in greek and greece because greece played against that team the next okay. day okay. and 
it was like all in their hands because if they would win that game, we would go to the semifinals. If they lose the game, the other team would go to the semifinals. So our tournament was not in our hand anymore. So we were all sitting in the hotel room and still talking about that moment. I get chills because it was probably one of the greatest moments because we're sitting all in the hotel room. We're all watching the show, uh, all watching it together. Our coaches didn't even like watch with us because they got too nervous <laughs> and too excited. So there were, um, okay, I was like, I was on my live ticker, I like live street, like live ticker, getting the live set. And uh-huh. the team was watching it because my life, like my live sets were a, two seconds ahead of the TV oh. and I had to know. Spoiler I had time. To know. <laughs> Spoiler. I know, so we were watching. So we were watching in two seconds or three seconds before it ended, the girl, one girl sh- uh, from Greece shot the basketball and she made it. And I already saw it on my live stream and I saw the clock going on to zero. So therefore I knew we are ahead, like we are win- like we're in the semifinals. Uh-huh. And then literally a second after the buzzer went off on the TV and the whole team just started screaming, jumping around. But wait a second, jump- wait a second. When you saw it, you didn't scream, I would be like, screaming like crazy. I was like, <laughs> I know, I was like, I couldn't, because they were all yelling at me because I looked at the live stream, but I had to know, so I had to be quiet. But I was like, as soon as I saw the zeros, I, my, I had the biggest smile. And then literally a second, two seconds after, we all started cheering and screaming. And then I just remember I um, run out, like I run out of the hotel room to, into the lobby to my coach where my coach didn't even watch it. He literally didn't watch it because he was too scared. And we just ran all into the lobby, screaming, crying, and telling him, and he was on the FaceTime call with his wife, uh-huh. telling him that we're in the semifinal. And we just, it was just so emotional. We just all hugged each other and made our team huddle and say, this is it. Like uh-huh. no one can like take this from us anymore. And from that point on, we just went through semifinals. We played against Croatia. Um, we blew them out. Like, yeah, I saw that. It was, and it was awesome. Croatia is usually a really good team. They always play Division A, but we blew them out. And mm-hmm. oh, it was just an amazing feeling. And then from that, since we um, won the semifinals, so we went to the final. And so. because, again, yeah, Slovakia or Slovenia. Like either one, I, the team we lost in the group. Uh, I think it's Slovakia, but I, I must, I have to confirm yeah, that, I, but I think, I think it's Slovakia. It was, I think it was Slovakia as well, because we lost against them in the group. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, this is payback time at the championship. Ooh. So we were just playing and putting all, like, all out, and we kind of got a big lead, and mm-hmm. um, towards the end, it was just like we knew. Like a couple minutes before uh, the buzzer went off, we knew we're gonna win this game. The buzzer went off, and we all just run on, like run at each other, hug each other, <laughs> fall on the ground, and like it's just all the pressure, all like the emotion just came at one point, and uh, it was just yeah. so amazing. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And then the next day, when you were like, okay, this is not a dream, so we really got a chance. So did you do anything like particular, weird, to no, celebrate? No, really. Yeah, we celebrated. Yeah. yeah, so because at the European Championship, it was like at the end of the, like at the end of the tournament, there's a huge player party where all the players from every single team just um, come together and just have fun. And it was so cool because, like, we came with our trophy, with our medal. Oh, and yeah. Everybody like was it. like, ooh, Germany, ooh. We were like, yeah. Actually, and, that's, um, that's one of the best things, uh, memories that you get. Like, I remember uh, at the end of the tournament in those, in those parties, we always, like, exchange shirts. That's yes. What we, actually, to us, like, let me tell you, one of the things that I, I find kind of weird now coaching is how, like, my players uh, will go and hug and what's up with all the players. Like, none of that. No, 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 no. When I played, you were the enemy. Like, I would mm-hmm. not talk to you until the end of the game. So, in a European championship, you would not talk with those people for two weeks or ten days. Mm-hmm until that party and then that party that's when you talk oh you know you're a pretty good player and we switch pins and t-shirts so it's pretty cool exactly. to come in the room 
with a trophy and be like, yeah, Germany's here. So Exactly. It was super fun. And then, as you said, you bring all your t-shirts with you. You have like your pile on your arm of t-shirts and you're like, who wants that? Who wants that? And you're like, you try to exchange with like the best clothing gear and like the best sweatshirts because you looked at them throughout the two weeks. What's like, oh, what do you want? That's a scouting, a scouting for gear. And that part. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> good, mm -hmm. good. So that was um, before getting to, uh, no, that was your second year, right? Mm -hmm. When you were exactly. at USD. But before that, so you jump on a plane, cross the ocean, get to USD, and myself being European, uh, that's a cultural shock, right? Yeah. So if you are to tell your story, the, what were the difference in culture that you found from Germany and US, like for a young girl that uh, wants to come and play in college here. So what mm -hmm. are the things that you'd be like, hey, watch out for what? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> watch out for i don't know okay so first what i was surprised about the supermarket like that's like one big culture thing <laughs> they are huge like everything you can buy is like in big packages but that was like one of the biggest things um but i don't know i didn't really have that big of a culture shock but mm -hmm. just also because coming to san diego everything was so laid down like california like everybody's super nice and I knew Engl English pretty well at that time and so I could like communicate mm -hmm. and um, my team was really helpful they like adjusted and helped me with like my English and like if I didn't know the word they tried to like figure it out with me together mm -hmm. so that was amazing but um, I don't know if girls want to come over to college from Europe especially is just a whole different environment of basketball it's gonna it's super intense and you don't really have water breaks like you have water breaks but those are time <laughs> and so like back home we always had our water break would sit down and just talk for a second but then here you get like okay one minute if you're not at the line at the end ah, you gotta run so like it's like a little time management you gotta figure it out Especially was, um, if you, like, I had the pleasure to be one of uh, your coach, the um, positional coach. And, mm -hmm. y'all, let me tell you this. My group, so I had the Biggie Bigs after my first year. Yes, yes, Biggie Bigs, love. And I am the kind of coach that always, at the end of the year, I like to ask, you know, the players, okay, what worked, what didn't work? Because we are in this together. So... Mm -hmm talking with the players and they're always in my office, like leaving notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> she was one of them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> leaving notes, getting on my nerves. Uh, no, I'm kidding. And one of the things that I asked, and I was like, okay, so after one year, so let's talk about what happened during the year, things that I can get better because I think as coaches, we need to get better too. And that's not a better way of, going out there and communicate and ask the players that so I always do that every year and I remember asking and one of the things that they tell me was like no there is not much oh I know we need more water breaks <laughs> <laughs> I was like you guys don't drink and then I that made me think and I start like planning my water breaks in my workouts mm -hmm. uh, individual workouts because you guys like made me notice that so I thank you and <laughs> and Steve Williams and Caroline yes. because you guys were on me so thank you made me a better coach so. <laughs> thank you for giving us the water break no I'm kidding no but it was just really funny to adjust to that and um it's just just in general college is super intense um you have a lot of practices a lot of like how to combine school work and And um, basketball together, how they focus, be organized, time management, and like get every single help you can get from like your coaches, academic advisor, or like all people around you, 
um, that provide help use it and not be like scared to ask for it because that just got me through college like with all the time and academics and basketball I used a lot of like resources yes I yeah. think uh, USD does a great job with that mm -hmm. I, I, I I was a student athlete too and I was fortunate enough to have a uh, a group of people in place to help me through the ropes and yeah. uh, USD does a good, good job with that um, exactly. but there were times there were times in your freshman year that you struggle <laughs> you know you know how I we're gonna talk about it because this I mean I try to be as truthful as possible uh, mm -hmm. with the podcast because uh, ABC evolution is for players coaches uh, for everyone yeah. and like the more truth we are, uh, I think, the better prepare kids that want to come. And that's the idea, you know, develop kids so they can follow their dreams, whatever their dreams might be. Yeah. It might be coming and playing uh, in college, in high school, professional. So we hearing from you. So there were times that things are hard, you know, it's, yeah. yes, it's a dream. And it doesn't mean that you're going to find everything easy. And so mm -hmm. share with us uh in your first year let's talk about your first year uh, mm -hmm. like situations that you felt less confident or you felt adversity and, and why not like yeah. i know sometimes i was like you know what some days it was so hard and i was like oh did i make the right decision should like like i feel like going home and and mm -hmm. those adversities and how you overcame those adversities on your yeah first year. <clears throat> so my first year was actually kind of rough because just being away from home for the first time and adjusting to the time zone and um adjusting to like not seeing your family or like talking to your family at any like day like any time of the day and then um just having english as your first language at that time and like just adjusting to that and communicating and then having basketball um yeah, it was kind of rough just because the amount of practice um, we had combined with school was way, it was just a lot at a time. And also coaching, like the coaches were really intense and um, were really like, we had to work really hard, um, which was great because we achieved the goal. But at that time, as a freshman coming in, they, um, they just throw you like in the cold water basically you have like your sisterhood like your sister and your team who like help explain, you along explain the sister uh explain okay it. yeah so um as a freshman or like any like if, as a player you will get um paired up with the older player so mm -hmm. i had I had um, Sydney Williams, she was a junior in that time. She was my sister and she like made sure I was on time. I was like working hard. I would um, fill out all the paperwork or like anything they asked me to do, I would do it and she would make sure um, I would do the, like everything, I would do everything. But then also if I have questions, if I need help, um, she would be there for me as emotional support. And I think having a sister was just, really incredible like it was just so amazing because you had something you can ask and lean on and mm -hmm. um, someone who has exper experience um, three years before you and they know they've been in that program for a long time and they know what to do at diff uh, different situations mm -hmm. and then also um, what was great Sid Williams was um, the same position so I was always paired up against her also in like on the court so I would play against her all the time <laughs> And um, yeah, <laughs> time out on that one. Time out on that one. <laughs> so let's talk about your relationship with Sid Williams. Okay, yo, let me give you a little bit of a background on this. So here we are with two very, very competitive post players. They go against each other every single day in practice, fighting from the same spot. One is a senior and the other one is a freshman. Yeah. And they are sisters. So the level of intensity in practice sometimes, it would get to the point that I am competitive. I am, and I, as a coach, yeah. I was as a player. But it was incredible because you see these two girls going at each other, but 
at the end of the day, they know that they're making each other better. And the more competitive they are, the better they practice, the better they play. So not easy because Patty was younger and we have a couple of conversations during the year. Like I said, I was uh, a positioning coach where Patty cried, Patty was frustrated, but, and it takes time. It takes time to understand where you are and where you want to be. And I think Patty did a really good job with that because even though she was frustrated, there were days they were not such a good days. She embraced the process. And by embracing the process, she ended up accomplishing great things. And then mm -hmm. three years later, she was that person. So she learned from Sid. And maybe there were times that maybe she didn't agree with what Sid did, said, whatever. But later on, she was that person. So mm -hmm. do you think, or do you, did you take anything from Sid's teaching and apply it later? And how you s saw your role later on? Yeah. So <clears throat> I just, I'm really glad, like, I'm so blessed I had her as my sister, just how she, how competitive, as you said, how competitive she was. I like learned how to like never give up. She was always the one who would like go hard and like go hardest at um, those plays. And she would always like be the idol for me because I knew if she goes hard and she was also a starter and like did great things on the court. Mm -hmm. So I knew if she like, if I work like her, if I like compete like her, I will be at that point. And that just what gets me going and what I um, like, what pushed me through it. And then also like there's one situation I remember that and Sid Williams does too, like we just talked about it. There was one situation in the game, one minute left. I played, so I was really blessed. I played a lot through my um, freshman year. That's true. Um, Sid Williams fouled out, one minute left and it was a really close Ooh. game. We were like up one or two and coach put me in as a sub and Sid Williams came into like, came up to me right in my face and said, you gotta yeah. play good. <laughs> you got it. Step up right now. And I was so overwhelmed with this situation because I haven't been put in the situation where like I just had to like be last minute in crunch time and with that team. And I just started crying <laughs> in the middle of the huddle, in the middle of the time up before I went on the court because the Lord was just like, you have to play good because she just fouled out. So I had to like step up and like play for her and I think I did pretty good at that situation. I don't think I did. No, yeah. you did. I remember that and you sure did. And uh, I am very, very happy for you. And <laughs> then to finish that, that season, right? We go to the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to show you a picture okay. and I want your thoughts on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So let's talk about yeah. this. Because that's why I was emphasizing, okay, your first year, because like you said, there was a lot of struggle in yeah. that first year. It was a lot of commitment, a lot of tears, a lot of sacrifices, but it all paid off because at the end of that year, uh, look what happened. So tell us a yeah. little bit, how was the feeling of getting, uh, freshman all WCC and let's say the WCC uh, is a mid-major but it's a very competitive mid-major where you have a lot of uh, teams making to the tournament to the WNIT so how was getting the freshman all WCC team um it was actually so first I didn't even know I I kind of like tried to still figure it out WCC and like college basketball so I didn't really know that there was teams happening at the at the end of um, college or like mm -hmm. at the end of the season so we were all sitting in the locker room and it was the week before the WCC tournament and coach said oh congratulations to uh, Patty uh, freshman all WCC team and I'm like hmm what <laughs> like yeah like you honored like you've been honored to be like one of the um, freshman players and I'm like well, what? <laughs> and then like, I didn't really realize 
that this actually happened. And after practice, I like checked online and checked the roster and I was, I saw my name on it. And I honestly started crying because what I went through in my freshman year is just intense. Like what you said, what I sacrificed, like I achieved a little goal in making, putting my name into like, into the list as a for, for especially for me, like as a foreign player, um, coming over here to the United States and then making an impact on the league and on my team was just an amazing feeling. And um, that just like got me started. So I knew like, I knew I can get through it. I've been through it and I'm still here. I survived and I'm now like honored for my hard work. And I know I knew like, if I gonna keep up with that hard work, um, I will achieve great things. And I did, and I was here four years later, I achieved my uh, life goal playing professional basketball. Yeah, that's awesome. So when you tenured in uh, at USD, uh, mm -hmm. you uh, end up playing two uh, finals, conference finals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's a great accomplishment. And uh, this year, uh, unfortunately, from what happened, you guys uh, end up being short. But it would be a chance for you to play. Um, the tournament, uh, the WNIT, and I'm pretty sure because you yeah. guys had a tremendous year, and part of that for sure it was uh, the captain, one of the captains, great work ethic and uh, strength out there. So um, we're going to take a little break, and then when we come back, we will uh, talk about your new uh, path your future as uh, what you expect and all the good stuff that will come with you playing professional. Okay. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. Welcome back to our second uh, half of the, the podcast. Again, we having Patty Brossman. Uh, I don't want to call her Patty. Uh, with us today, uh, the first first half we talked about our path getting to USD and graduating from USD. So now, uh, it was last week, Patty, that you got uh, that you signed your contract. Yeah. So tell us a little bit yeah. about that. Tell us about the team. Where are you gonna play? How did it happen? Yeah. So. Um... Right after I finished uh, college basketball and we heard um, NCA at WMIT was canceled, uh -huh. I got a call. I got a call by my agent, um, um, Gore First um, Basketball Agency, and Alex Shaw was wondering if I want to like, um, if she want to work, if I want to work with her. So I said yes, yeah. and because she I, she's been following me throughout my college career. And she was always helpful and like always um, caught up like on my life and like basketball stats. So, um, and I can trust her. So I signed with her. And then from that point on, it went really quick. Um, I, she called me and told me that I got an offer from France, uh, from Calais. And it sounded, everything sounded perfect. And it's been always my dream to play um, in France, honestly, because I love um, the country and I know basketball is really good and really professional yeah. over there. So um, when I heard I got an offer, I talked to my parents a lot. I like yeah. talked a lot with my um, friends and family about it. And a week after or like a couple of days after I told Alex Shaw that I want to sign with Calais and now I play in the second league in France and um, there's only one European and one American mm -hmm. so I there's another American coming in and the rest the rest of France uh, French players and I have to adjust to the language because they most likely speak French there. So I've been oh, oui, oui. Uh, oui, oui. so yeah. I've been practicing French, and um, um, I'm going to move over to France end of August. Okay. To start preseason, um, and I'm like super excited. 
and I can't wait to see what's going on. So to you, so now is a new step in your life. And to you, what does it mean being a professional? So why, why do I ask this? What does it mean to you now? And then we're going to come back in a year <laughs> and I'm going to ask you the same question. Mm -hmm. So to you right now, uh, what does it mean? Like, what do you think a professional is? Yeah, so I honestly like, thought, about, thought a lot of it. And um, now moving on from college um, to um, being professional athlete, athlete, you have no other job than playing basketball. So you don't have to focus on basketball and uh, focus on school. You don't have to like do anything else besides that. So it's my full-time job. And now being a professional athlete, I um, set my goals where I want to be at the end of the season. And, Can you with us um, what those goals are? <laughs> so I want to um, lead the team in rebounds. And I want to um, be an impactful player for the team. And I'm going <laughs> to get you accountable for yeah. that. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and um, that's like for, for right now my goals because I know those are my strengths. And um, the team doesn't know me yet. I don't know. The, I talked to the coach one time, but I don't really know them. So I have to adjust that and get to know them. And so it's a whole fresh new start for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to um, put myself out there right away as being a hard worker and having that image of like, People like players looking up to me, and they want to do as much work as I do. And um, I told myself I want to work a lot on like finishing around the basket and my three. Mm -hmm. And so those are the areas that you think uh, if you improve, mm -hmm. it will make the difference. And why not? Like if you improve in those areas, uh, I know this year uh, that team is in the division two, but. If you improve in those areas, you think that's going to give you a chance to play uh, in Division One in, in France? Um, yes, I think so. So that's mm -hmm. like one of my goals. Like, if I put myself out there, if I'm going to be an impactful player, my goal is to move on next year and to move up into the first league. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to get my name out there. I want the team to remember me and. Um, so yeah, I'm planning on, because we have, so being professional um, with that team, you have, pract you have practice once, once a day. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the gym is open at all time and they do individual work. So I want to do individual work every morning um, with my, my, my girl. Coaches. That's my girl. <laughs> Look at you. All grown. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I want to do, because yeah, right. So I want to work a lot on, um, my basketball development and like basketball skills mm -hmm. and as I said I want to as a fresh new star they no one knows me in France so I want to um be remembered I want to make my like I want to put my name out there mm. so people know me yeah that that's a that's a good way of, of seeing it I, I that's something that uh and I might even have told you guys you just have one time to cause a, a good impression yeah, yeah. so it's your your first time if you show up as a hard worker, that's what people will remember you by. Mm -hmm. And that's your standard and you're doing yeah. a great job. And that comes my second question. So you said that um, you guys, uh, you guys start in August, right? Uh, COVID-19 allowing that uh, if you start in August. So from now to August, what are your, your plans uh, on, preparing yourself for mm -hmm. what is ahead. Yeah, so I don't have an access to a basketball gym right now just because of the restriction in San Diego, but I do work out every day. I'm working out a lot of my strength and um, I'm going for a lot of runs, bike rides, to do everything to stay in shape. And um, they just recently opened some parks so I could um, I start shooting. Um, doing some shooting drills outside on the basketball hoop and then um, three times a week I'm doing some ball handling stuff cone dribbling just to keep um, 
my hands and feet activated and like keep the <laughs> feeling for the basketball. And um, I'm getting a, a workout plan from my coaches from friends now. So I'm going to do that. And that's basically all I have, like all I do and trying to like prepare myself to come back as like in a pretty good shape. So as of right now, you're already talking with a, with a team and they letting you know what you need to, to be doing in your off time. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's great. Yeah. You know, that, that's great because uh, uh, the ABC evolution starts because mm -hmm. of that. When I was a player in the summer, that was like I worked out uh, because I was used to it and I played for my national team. But it was a struggle when I wasn't playing for the national team to find a place yeah. to go, coaches to, to follow you. And, uh, and I started doing it by myself. Like I would call my coach from the national team. I was like, okay, I need a gym. Uh, where can I go? Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, give me numbers of players that are around here. And the, when the, yeah. the phone ring, they would hear, okay, practice tomorrow is at nine o'clock. I was not going mm -hmm. to ask them, uh, do you want to come? That's no question. Now you are a uh, player for the national team. You are coming. So my coach would yeah. just laugh. And then he learned that. So he would be like, okay, call this one, call this one. <laughs> so I would go after them. And uh, yeah. but now that there's, there's places that they're doing it and I'm telling you right now, you are coming. So letting know you and some of the people with the ABC uh, evolution, that's three different programs. That is the ABC yeah. evolution camps, that's the ABC elite and the elite mm -hmm. interest is for players like you that in the summer want to work on their game and want to be followed. So that's going to be like, I'm already doing some of that. I have three, four players that I'm watching film. I'm breaking down film, uh, mm -hmm. telling them, in my opinion, what are the things that they need to work on. And mm -hmm. I'm in contact with a strength and conditioning coach. She is taking what I'm telling. Okay, I think she's not strong here, there, or he, here, there. So she's already developing a, a plan for them. So... Mm -hmm. I, I'm so excited for the opportunity to uh, work with you again. And you know, I'm going to be hard on you. But you're German. Oh, you I know. I you know. Take it. <laughs> yeah. But I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to you, it's already it's better. It's just go. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's a part of basketball that I think um, we don't take care as much as the mental part. You know, uh, you go into a new phase of your life. Uh, the challenges, the mental challenges that you're going to face now are different. You know, uh, yeah. in college, you can kind of slow it down into it because you're a freshman. There's not a lot of expectations. And then you become sophomore, freshman. And then when you're a senior, it's like when you're a junior and a senior, it's like Ooh. pressure, right? And exactly. now you're going to be the foreigner, and you know what that means, you're going to be the foreigner of your team, still European, yeah. but uh, that is a lot of responsibilities with that. So uh, are you ready for that kind of um, responsibilities? And uh, is there anything, oh, I, I don't even know if you thought about that, because you just, it's like, it's fresh, you just became professional. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so um, if not, there's anything that you think that you could be doing now in this period, mm -hmm. or even if I can help you, you, you let me know when we're done uh, with the yeah. mental part of the game. Yeah, so I honestly, I think I'm ready for it just mm -hmm. because I know we talked about college was kind of slow, but I came in freshman year, I was the foreigner, like no one really knew me, um, no one heard of me. And I kind of like um, had a big role Mm -hmm. um as the freshman so I kind of like accepted that role and rolled with it and then senior year I um uh, became captain and had a really huge role um being one of the leaders of as the team holding the team together I adjusted to that and now going into a whole different um kind of league kind of like environment I think like the one challenge I will face is like for sure the language Mm -hmm. I just have to adjust to that and like learning a lot um, from it. But then mentally, I think 
I'm ready, but I know what to do if I'm like struggling. So if I'm like kind of struggling, I know I'll just talk to friends on the phone, get um, the most important person or people are my parents. If I'm like struggling um, in like in basketball and life in general, I'll call them and I get positive feedback and I, they just build me up again and it helps me a lot. And then through quarantine right now, through COVID-19, I uh, worked a lot on myself and I started realizing um, that going on bike rides or going on walks by myself helped me a lot to clear my mind and to um, focus on myself. And I'm meditating sometimes just to awesome. relax my body. And I think I will find, I just have to find something outside of basketball to, that's have it a walk at the beach, have it because I'm right by the beach, Kelly is right by the beach. So it's really mm, my opinion. I'm guessing why did you chose that team? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just have to find something to get my head off basketball. That's what really like helps me through a lot and like mm -hmm. keeps my mental state engaged that I'm just playing basketball, but then either like during the day or at night, I need to have something else I can like focus on and just like relax a little bit. Yes, and uh, that, that's, that balance, I think that's, uh, some of us struggle a lot, you know, like mm -hmm. now, like you said, now basketball is what you do. Like you don't have anything else to take your head out, out of the, whatever happens on the court. So finding that balance and like mm -hmm. you said, like not being afraid to reach out to yeah. family, uh, friends, uh, coaches, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, with me, you always have an open door. We always have that in common yeah. good policy. So feel free to do that because, uh, when you are a professional player, you are in a fishbowl. So everything you do, everything you put out there, like it takes a totally different uh, dimension. And sometimes it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to deal with it because we're still people, we still not, yeah. you know, and sometimes a lot of people uh, see professional athletes as uh, role models, and we are, mm -hmm. and we have to be conscious of that. But we are humans, so we're going to yeah. make mistakes, and we're going to grow from them, and that should not define who we are. And uh, when you don't have a good village that supports you in those difficult mm -hmm. times, uh, you know, the, one of the things that we're talking about a lot in the league is mental health. I have yeah. uh, really known players like Kevin Love coming out and be like, you know what? This is not easy. Shamika Hoskla, yeah. great player in college. Like she was like my match, like college in <laughs> WNBA. And I just lately, I, I heard about her struggles and we don't know about it, you know? So yeah. my, if I can leave, leave you a piece of advice, like your, your head is the right place. Don't be afraid of reaching mm -hmm. out and, uh, talk to people, communicate uh, what you're going through because that's just going to um, help you throughout your career and just because yeah. the happier you are playing, the longer your career is going to be. So mm -hmm. that's you have the, the right mindset yeah. for it. So yeah. Really good to hear that. Okay, Patty, uh, we're going to make one last break. I'm going to do a little game. Uh, I have a surprise for you. So, guys, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for the last part of our podcast. And uh, I couldn't finish this, uh, this piece with Patty without getting a reaction to the video that I'm going to share right now. She doesn't okay. know yet, but I know it's going to be a pretty cool one. Uh, so, Patty, just stay mm -hmm. a minute or so to take a look at this video. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Ha <laughs> 
Okay, so tell us a little bit what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the person next to me is my best friend Madison. She uh, is my teammate and we came in together at the same time as freshmen and now we graduated together <laughs> and throughout our college career we came, like, became best friends and we had um, we were known as being best friends and like the duo and so they uh made a tv show or they created a tv show uh at our college about us just the maddie and patty show just the inside view um in our friendship what we do on a daily basis and yeah so so, <laughs> so there was a, a nickname given to you guys right what was mm -hmm. that um we we have been called patterson because i'm patty <laughs> Madison is yes. Madison, so Patterson, and lately, the last um, two years, we've been called Fire and Ice. So, um, I can see that, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> so right now, to finish the show, uh, we're going to have a, a little game, and let's see how tight these Pattersons are. So, Ooh. knock, knock, let's see if Madison answers. Oh. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good. Maddie, how are you? You back I'm home? Good. Back home, right? Mm -hmm. Home Arizona now, right? Oh yeah, it's so hot right now. It's like 100 degrees. <laughs> I can tell you already burned. Could I put some sunscreen on that? <laughs> it's called tan. <laughs> Look, Mary, I wanted to surprise Patty. Uh, start to do this podcast to wish her luck on your new phase of her life of playing professional. And we already talked about her career in college and how it's going to be in professional. But I could not finish um, the show without having a little game. And <laughs> I, we don't, couldn't think about a better game than the Patterson game. The Patterson game. I love that. <laughs> So, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask you questions about Patty. Patty, you're gonna a uh, answer in a uh, sheet of paper. Maddie, you're gonna do the same. And then let's see if you get the right answers to the questions. Okay. All right, Maddie? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first, uh, this is so easy. I think anyone that was around Patty knows this one. So this is not <laughs> a bonus for you, Maddie. But what is Patty? favorite color oh <laughs> start with the easy ones first calm down <laughs> easy ones first you ready to show three two one go oh okay. correct correct that's one okay the second one uh favorite tv show that should be easy too um. mm. Go. Oh, Gossip what? Girl. What? what? <laughs> yeah, okay. I agree. Gossip Girl mm -hmm. is awesome. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Mary, remember, it's Gossip Girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know Gossip Girls that leave yeah. <laughs> texts in my, in my office. XOXO. Oh, anyway, <laughs> they were awesome. They used to come to my office and just letting me know how much uh, they cared and i really had a good time i really appreciate you guys really oh good. yeah i didn't <laughs> say it so you can get like big heads and stuff but <laughs> please so, now. <laughs> just now i'm not your coach anymore yeah so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one one so the other one uh favorite vacation destination hmm. ah not so easy now huh like where she Five. wants to go? Yes, where she wants to go. Oh, you know, Five. I know Madison. Four, that's not the question. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. Australia, Santorini. Patty, why do I know you better than you know yourself? 
That is so true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, Patty. Maddie was good. Okay, I'm under, I'm under so. pressure. Oh, I know. I'm under pressure. Okay. I'm oh like, my god. Uh, two to one. I, I'm not feeling nice. this, y'all. Okay. The next one. Best birthday present. What is the best birthday present, Patty? Like I ha like I in the past. So your last birthday, what was your best birthday present? So five, From me. four, <laughs> no, three, no, 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 two. Patty, I already know this. We talked about this literally. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be cheating. <laughs> Don't be cheating. No, no cheating. Wait, no cheating. Wait, no, no, no. Two, one. No, Lift it up. no, Lift no. no. No, no, Maddie. Maddie, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I was about to write it, but I like. Yeah, it's near my New York trip. Laura coming to surprise you? Yeah. Oh that's my true. God. This is a fiasco, y'all. This is a Mary, fiasco. I, I should be ahead of the points right now. I literally, all these answers are right. <laughs> oh, well. Well, you have two more. So it's three to one right now? Yeah, okay. You I'm have <laughs> two more to tie it. So no pressure. <laughs> okay, no pressure. No pressure. Patty. So, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, this one is so good. So I good. Oh, God. No comments, just right. And you guys can <laughs> understand why. No comments, just right. Patty, dogs or cats? Shh. Right, right. <laughs> So, people, you will understand why the suspense. Ready, set, go. Trick question. Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say neither monkey? <laughs> I said, like, I said neither, like, monkeys, yeah. <laughs> so, Patty, that's one of the things that her teammates gave her hell for it. She does not oh. like pets. She's not like dogs, <laughs> cats. And no. What kind of person are you, Patty? Come on. Mm -hmm. Money's a horse. So three to two. Let me see. I'm up. Uh, last one to tie it. Last movie watched. Together or hold up, hold up. How, how do you know that? I, <laughs> I don't know. Last night. <laughs> together. <laughs> last movie you watched together? Yeah. Yes. Five. Four. No, 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 no. Three, <laughs> two, one. Have, show no, it. No, no, no. Show it. Show it. Come on. Show it. I, I, I didn't I, write anything down. I know the show we watched. No. Go. I Patty. get this point. <laughs> Patty, let's go. I already won because it was me against you too. I already won. If you don't type this one, no pressure. But if you don't type, <laughs> I win. So, no. Patty, you don't know. You don't know what, what was the last movie, so just give up. <laughs> Invisible Man. Oh my gosh, that, see? I don't even want to think about that movie. <laughs> I still have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I want to watch that, so no spoilers, please. No, you have to watch it. I, I Mary? want to, I want to. So that's it. Uh, I won, but there's nothing else to expect because <laughs> I just play games that I know that I'm going to win. So this is just an example that uh, the twins, Pattersons, uh, don't know each other. So <laughs> you, you Mary, Mary, hold on, hold on. All my answers are the right answers. <laughs> Every single I, one. I was just under pressure. I like, uh, uh, that's one thing with sports. You need to perform under pressure. So that means yeah. that she's still growing, y'all. She's still growing. <laughs> So uh, I know you guys are going to have time to, uh, to hang out some more. Um, so I wish you both good luck in your Aww. next phase of mm -hmm. your Thank lives. You. I just wanted to let you know uh, if I didn't do a good job doing it while I was your coach. Uh, I really care about you guys. You're mm -hmm. always going to be my girls. Uh, I hope to, to see you. Uh, succeed in whatever path you might take, being professional in whatever profession you, you choose. Uh, definitely going to have you guys come and say hi at ABC Evolution. 
Uh, I know yes. you guys love to travel. I know, Maddie, you, you're still planning that trip to go over to Europe, right? So oh, let's okay. get it done next year. <laughs> yes. So you guys can come to ABC and talk to the young girls and the young guys. Uh, the awesome experience you guys, you guys had and all your successes and struggles and all, all that stuff. So thank you so much. For the game, Maddie. Yeah, for so coming. Fun. Uh, thank you. <laughs> sorry, <Penny>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I won. That's what it matters. No. Uh, not competitive at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, uh, nice talking to you guys. Be safe out there. Uh, and then talk you soon. Too. Talk yeah, to you soon. Talk to you later. later.